Bucks, go Bucks. Welcome back, everybody, to Buck and Blake Sports with your host, Mr. Buccaneer Blake himself. Uh, it's a rainy day out here in Tampa Bay, heading over here in the Tampa Bay area, coming up by Raymond James Stadium. Um, visibility is probably pretty low, but I can get out these radio shows, though. Uh, I don't have to, you know, I do an audio, it's a second live audio edition on um, the Buccaneer Blake radio show. Um, much easier getting it out to you guys this way. I don't have to do video all the time, set up shop, make sure I got somewhere uh, quiet where I can do that and do the editing. It's much easier to do audio. But I will still continue to give you uh, video and stuff because I know you guys like the picture in picture and the video clips and all that stuff. So I'm going to continue to give you that. Uh, we're going to go over uh, my Buccaneers losing to the Bengals 12 to 23. Um, you know I don't care about wins and losses in the preseason. I care about player performance. And, and first and foremost, injuries. Because I'm just tired of seeing, you know, star players and key players go out in, 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 pre, in preseason games for the season. And you lose players after a, a whole offseason of hard work just to, you know, just to see it end that quickly. And now your team has to adjust when you were banking on certain things all season. Yeah, it just gets, it just gets tiresome to see that year in and year out. But uh, let me get back to it. Uh, injury to Jude Abririma. I was looking forward to see him last year, but he was injured. I was looking forward to seeing him this year. Looks like he's going to be out again. Um, it's, uh, sad to see any type of injury like that, especially you know before week one performance. Uh, looks like Javion Elliott. Is gonna sure up that uh, nickel spot there. Always traffic in this town. It looks like he's gonna uh, sure up that nickel spot. Uh, Vernon Hargraves played really well. Uh, you can tell off-season workouts have worked out for him. Just because of the rain, there's traffic. God, I hate coming here. Sorry about that. Um, There's a lot of good things and a lot of bad things I saw in this game. To me, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's now that I'm doing, like, analysis and and blog writing and um, becoming more of a student of the game. I wouldn't say I'm a mentor. I would still say I'm a student of the game. That, that game wasn't long to me. And I watched every single snap, every special team, every pass protection, every pass rush to coverage that I could see that was given off the TV. And um, I watched every snap, and it just didn't seem long to me. I mean, I, I literally was, th was thinking like I was coaching that game. And what I mean by that, I was like, okay, let's go here and test out uh, the field goal situation. We just run the ball three times here and kick it, and let's get some more competition going and see how that turns out. That's literally how I was thinking the whole game, like, when Fitzpatrick threw that interception um, uh, after that big kick return by Reedy, Bernard Reedy, um, and he threw that pick, a forced interception, which I was just like, why? That's why I was looking forward to seeing another uh, field goal opportunity in the game situation with either Nick Folk or, or Robert Aguayo, just like we did at the end of the game. You know, just you're driving down there to, to see the field goal situations, and uh, you get an in-game, in-game, in-game experience. Which I have to go on record and saying Robert Aguirre failed horribly, horribly. 
You know, it, it's rough. You try to take a, a take a chance on certain things. And, you know, you're going to take risk. And you get rewarded for risk. And, and sometimes you don't get rewarded for risk. And what I mean is, everybody's just going to keep saying over and over, oh, yeah, you wait to the second round, you're going to get her. I mean, yeah, you took a chance at a position that we were struggling at for years. If you read my blog, we should have never got rid of Matt Bryan as the kicker. People say, oh, he wanted too much money. I mean, was the money really that much worth it now? I said that we're still shuffling kickers when we could have had one on the roster the whole time and not having to worry about this. Was it really worth it? I don't think so. Um, but what I'm saying is sometimes you got to take a risk. Like we took a risk on Levante David. It panned out well. And what's funny about that is that the, the uh, draft... The mock drafts had us taking Bobby Wagner and Seattle Seahawks taking Levante David. And they both wear the same number, 54. So I thought that was just thought of my head. That was just funny. But, yeah, that, that when we picked up Levante David, we picked up Laquan Alexander. We took risk. I mean, we taking, you know, taking some risk on uh, players and, get, and uh, coming up with starters with, with lower picks. Granted, that second-round pick should have turned out we could have got something else with it but it's, it's just a shame but you can't look back and just keep thinking negative all the time you got to stay positive moving forward you tried you went out there and you, and you tried to make your team better with a pick and with a guy who set an NCAA record in field goals a guy Jameis Winston personally knows it's okay and what can you do so now here you are you, you're turning to Nick Folk who came off a good season last year but yet didn't re-sign with the team Hey, this we're, we're, we're shuffling kickers again, and just hopefully, you know, sooner or later, we'll find what we're looking for in the special teams department, and we can move on from that. But you know, just keep reiterating on the fact that we wasted a second round pick. Sorry if it, if you can hear the the rain. The rain's coming down pretty hard, so if you hear that, please excuse it. It should die down here, subside here pretty soon. Um, but I can't knock them for trying. I'm not going to sit over here and say, oh, this will be a mark against them getting fired and all this. You tried to fix your team. It didn't work. It's the gamble you take. I said, well, what, what can you do is move forward from it and don't let, um, don't let it hurt you that much. Hurt you like it did us last year. Um, offensive line looked pretty good. Uh, Ali Marpet did not play. Uh, center, he took a, took the day off. Uh, Joe Holly stepped in, did fine, which I expected. Uh, Kevin Panfield, uh, Jr. Sweezy's first game as a Buccaneer, he did well. First first string team did good. Mike Evans looks fine. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, you know, he wasn't really going all out. I don't blame him. I said, keep yourself healthy for when the games matter. Uh, Cameron Bray did pretty good. Uh, O.J. Howard got some nice blocks in. Doug Martin looked fine. Jack Was Rogers still did his thing. Um, and um, Mc, uh, McNichols, Jeremy McNichol, or McWeapon, did hit a nice big run, got a first down. Uh, well, I could talk about him in, in, the, um, in the Hard Knocks. I got to watch the episode one. I didn't want to go over it. You know, do the show without watching it first so I can talk about that. Uh, you get to see the background that Jameis Winston came from. And um, country kid, family oriented. You know, it's, it's, it's good stories to hear, you know. Or you get to see where the roots where people came from, the situation they came from. Mike Evans had, wasn't exactly like uh, Jameis Winston's background, but Evans' background was pretty rough too. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, if you know about it, you can look it up. The story between his uncle and his father and all that. Um, but uh, I'm going to go into the football aspect of it. Like uh, McNichols uh, had to call Snoop, you know, and get into it because he's getting confused on special teams calls and the way it's called. It's called right, right, left and, and stuff like that on um, first wave, second wave stuff on kickoff. And, uh, punt, punt, punt. punt and stuff like that special teams he has to snoop made a valid point the one that knows the most plays the most and that's a valid point it football is majority from the neck up 
that's why a lot of players that aren't physical specimens survive in the game for a long time because from the neck up you know the game the game is slowed down to you you're figuring it out how to move in and out how to get open how to find gaps and stuff and that means a lot he, he said like i said snoop might be a rapper a gangbanger whatever you want to call him that's a, that's valid points it's it's studying the game it's just and then just coming out and playing because now once you're once you're playing and you're not thinking about it you know you can you can show off your natural abilities you can do the things you need to do and i'm sure jeremy mcnichols will do his thing i have high, i have high hopes in him and um much much like the rest of the guys you know um no expense i think it's going to be really great this season i got to see his get off this year he looks a lot faster uh He's hell. He help. He, he's getting. He, he breaks a lot of tackles. Like I said, he's not gonna uh, shove an offensive lineman into the back in, into the quarterback, but he breaks a lot of. He sheds a lot of blocks, and he made a great stop on a run play, shedding the block, and he was like a step away or a second away from making a couple sacks or QB hits. If the coverage had been tighter a little bit, and had the quarterback hold the ball. I, I, I really see his improvement. Um, but what scared me was the interior line. Uh, they were kind of getting beat up in there. And uh, linemen were able to get to the second level. Uh, Levante, David, and Quan Alexander. And we're getting kind of beat up in the run on the inside. Safeties had to make a lot of uh, touchdown saving tackles. And I hope that'll get clean up. I, I, my personal opinion, I think a lot of people... <clears throat> Uh, took a step back, geared down for this game. I don't think they really gave their full performance. Um, those who got a lot of contact, I really think they geared down. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm talking in reference to uh, first stringers, second stringers. Kind of the same thing happened. Those guys got pushed around. Um, There's still a lot of running lanes for running backs. Uh, um, for Joe Mixon and stuff like that. And that needs to be cleaned up. Stevie T uh, got pushed around a lot in there. And I expected him to, you know, at least hold his own because, you know, he's 26 years old and he's a rookie. So he's not like he's a really a young, young man. But he still got to transition to the game better. I think, too, he might have been thinking a little bit too much instead of just actually playing. I mean, if your job is the one one gap protect and just one gap protect, uh, don't try to, you know, hold and read and react because that might take away from, you know, physical abilities instead of just, you know, attacking. Well, what else do I have to say? Kicker competition. Nick Bolt hit his kick uh, for 43 yards out. Uh, Chris Godwin, uh, I think, caught one or two passes. Didn't really expect to see too much of him. Uh, I, 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 I suspect you don't want to get him hurt. I guess I think, I think a lot of it was geared down uh, to keep guys from getting hurt. I think guys took kind of a step back. I don't blame them if they did. This is more for guys that uh, are trying to make rosters and, and things of that sort. One out. Um, what else do I got? Uh, Fitzpatrick looked good at times, looked bad at another time. Uh, number four, um, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, that went out with the shoulder injury. Uh, he looked good, fitting balls and windows on big long downs. <clears throat> went out with a shoulder injury. Then the young kid at the end of the game from Colorado, he stepped in, did pretty well, scrambled, bought some time, picked up some first downs, got some field goal range that was squandered away by a missed field goal by Robert Aguayo. Um, uh, linebackers, when I saw my out of position, I saw a lot of them bootlegs. <clears throat> linebackers were over pursuing, uh, leaving tight ends and running backs wide open in the flats. Uh, letting containment get in break by D linemen. Like I said, these were their second, second and third string guys. Uh, Kendall Beckwith was out of position a lot, not attacking. Uh, Levante Bond made a couple tackles in the backfield. 
I don't think it was out of position too much. But, uh, you know, it's, it's the first game. It's, it's his, technically his rookie season because he didn't play last year. Um, Evans, uh, the safety, missed the open field tackle. Uh, he's got to clean that up. It would have been for a two-yard game instead of broke for 10 or 12. Uh, it's, just, it's just a couple things they got to clear up. Um, not Jonathan Moxie, but uh, my boy Ryan Smith. Got to play a whole lot. Um, he got to he got to put his speed on display this game, uh, chasing down uh, reverse play from the backside. He was manned up on the receiver. Uh, it was nice. He got he he did a lot of good things. Uh, like I said, it's a work in progress. Coming from playing a corner, being when you're being drafted, you're a corner, then switch to safety. Now you're back to corner, and then you're starting for the game in place for uh, Brent, Brent Rhymes. Uh, it was just good to see um, him getting some reps out there and not and not doing too bad against you know uh, formidable receivers and all that. I think I covered just about everything. Yeah. But um, thanks guys for tuning in. Oh, I didn't even see these. Uh, Andrew, let me see this. Well, Barf was solid. We signed Lindell after him, but he got Mercer. Yeah, true. Uh, Robert Griffin, thank you for the quarterback. Uh, yeah, I said we, we swapped around kickers too much. We just could have just kept Matt Bryant the whole time. Like I said, I put up a post blog. I put it in the stick carriers. So shout out to the stick carriers. I'm one of the members as well. I will do something special for y'all in my intros too. Um, show you guys some love. We show our guys some love. I can say that because I'm a part of them now. Um, yeah, I think just shuffling around kickers, I just it's just hurting us. And I just would think we need to find stability, and we need to find stability fast, and uh, stop guessing. As the guessing stuff is over, it's it's time to have a vision and have a focus, and, and not stop worrying about uh, kicking, is because uh, those can hurt us. But I'm gonna end this as we always do. You're the master of everything. What you do with your life. What you do with it is entirely up to you. Thank you guys. God bless and uh, fire those cannons.